What's up, guys? This is our first podcast. This is our first trial run. I'm OJ, joined by my two cousins. Hey, I'm Archie. I'm Archie. Yeah. <laughs> so they're sisters, yeah. and I am their cousin. Mm-hmm. And tell them why we're starting this podcast. Yeah, we just wanted to create a podcast for the modern Filipino millennial. Um, there's we've noticed that there's a lot of you know younger generation that are looking to reconcile with their Filipino identity and we just wanted to share some of our experiences talk about some challenges um, yeah and just really just connect with other Filipino youth out there that just wants to be more connected to who they are so we'll start with OJ tell us a little bit more about your upbringing where are you from like where did you grow up like what kind of community did you grow up in like why don't you share some of that with our listeners okay so first um we're doing this podcast in Vancouver I'm not from Vancouver I grew up in Montreal Quebec 514 you know what it is man you know what it is and i think uh, my community is very unique compared to other north american or western country major cities major cities because um there's already a conflict between french culture and english culture and then you got the traditional filipino household yeah so I, i think throughout my first like Half of my life, I struggled with identifying with which culture to choose from. Mm, okay. Yeah. So if you're an immigrant, basic education in Montreal or Quebec is if you are not an Anglophone from your parents, if you're an immigrant, basically, you are forced into French education. Yeah. From preschool. Mm-hmm. So you learn French. And that's I, a culture shock already. And that's a culture You're being shocker. forced into another culture. Right, right exactly. And then you go home, you speak English, and you have the... Tagalog speaking. Or in Montreal, Ilocano! Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One! Bukininam! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so in Montreal, I think it's very unique because we're a very tight community. It's a big community. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone. Yeah. The block is full filled with Filipinos. Yeah. But these Filipinos, I think, again, we're unique in North America because they all know how to speak English. They all know how to speak French. And then you get the, you know, that know how to speak Tagalog too. Mm-hmm. Right? So I grew up doing elementary, high school, then moved here. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, that's kind of yeah. I've yeah. been here since, and at first I hated it. You know, you know, dark you know what it is. You know what it is. Dark times. Exactly, and uh, now triggered. <laughs> yeah, now I like it out here in Vancouver. So, but Dope. well, I'll I'll leave it at that for now, then we'll elaborate later. Yeah. yeah. Um, as for me, I'm Archie. Um, I was born in Montreal. That's why I got such love. Shout Let's out get it. to Five One Four. Um, one of like my favorite uh, memories growing up in the summer is whenever I go back and visit and obviously visit my cousin OJ. Yeah. Um, and then I moved uh, to the Vancouver area uh, when I was four, and then actually uh, moved to the Philippines and stayed there. Went to school there, elementary, uh, primary school for four and a half years before I came back. So when I came back, um, and a lot of people who know me now would be shocked to know that the first couple years was rough for me because I didn't say or speak or open my mouth. I was quiet because I had a major culture shock as well coming back, fob. even though from, <laughs> yeah, I was major fob, um, even though I was, you know, born here, quote, um, and I should have been more comfortable, but I, I was in for a major shock. I mean, seven, eight years old, eight, nine, that's like your foundation years. And when you're kind of ripped up from uh, living in the Philippines and I, you know, uprooting and coming back down, uh, b- back up to Canada. It's like, whoa, like <clears throat> your whole world changed. Mm-hmm. So I'll elaborate a little bit more about that. Um, in terms of, you know, my adjustment through the years, I feel like 
uh, when I went to school here, when I came back from the Philippines, I um, only had a couple of friends and they were not Filipino. And then it was only when I got to high school that I actually had a longing to have like a group of friends that were Filipino. And then um, since then, I've actually uh, been more connected to uh, Filipino friends. So that's kind of my little gist of my <clears throat> upbringing. And how about you, Archia? Tell us a little bit about yours. What's up, y'all? I'm Archia. Woo! Um, Archie's <laughs> sister. Mm-hmm. Um, my well, I was born in and raised in Burnaby, Vancouver. Yeah, six o four, baby. Yep. And then, uh, <laughs> well, I'm just as a coconut could get, yo. Know, like I'm brown on my inside, white on the inside. You think I, so, though? Yeah. Well, not as much as like a lot of other people. I'm more cultured. I will admit. Would, but would you like? classical like identify yourself like coconut i don't think so oh uh, well i think from it depends other on people other may people. think it depends on who i'm around yeah okay yeah. well that's that's another segment that's another segment we'll get into yeah um yeah born and raised here i was always surrounded by multicultural people uh didn't really see any other differences yeah besides the fact that we're all human but yeah i just had like a more i guess i don't know how to explain it like a modern upbringing of like a but how how did you feel at home did you feel like you had a pretty traditional like oh yeah upbringing at home at home yes but yes and no only because i was born here yeah and that you we speak english to you at home yeah (laughs) but other than that i can but I just have the language, language and so I can, yeah, yeah so home. deeply with your so identity. I can, I'm more in touch with my roots than a lot of other yeah. millennials these days, I will say. Well, one of the reasons why we start this podcast is to yeah. like showcase that us three and probably others more yeah. that yeah. we love the Philippines. We we bleed Filipino. Oh, for sure. And we want to like express um, some of our uh, thoughts that we grew up with that still happen to this day. Yeah. We have people in our circles that, that you know, just act differently. But we want to promote the Pinoy pride. Yeah. yeah. Right? And our culture, the love of our culture, no matter the fact whether we were born here, whether we grew up somewhere else. But, like, that type of love for our culture and our country, our mother country, is, is deep. It's yeah. very strong, and all three of us are really passionate about it, and we just want to, through this podcast, be able to connect with others who are longing to find that type of connection, and we're hoping that if we share experiences and maybe share some of our challenges that, you know, others there can relate and maybe find some comfort in knowing that, like, hey, like, I I felt that, like, I heard you, like, mm-hmm. that totally mm-hmm. got me in the feels, man. <laughs> also, so, to, <clears throat> also to educate, too. Yeah. Of course. Definitely. So with that, we'll start off with the baseline. OJ, you know, when um, did you become more aware of your Filipino identity? Like you were obviously um, in like a unique situation, like you're in Montreal, French speaking province, uh, Quebec. And then there's like the Filipino community, but then you also have to know English, like it's a whole bunch of stuff. So when did you, um, I guess, become more aware of who you were and what your identity was as a Filipino? Okay, so going back to like my upbringing and our neighborhood, so Montreal, for those who don't know, it's an island. Mm-hmm. And really you s- split that into three, like one, one third is completely French dominant, one other third is English dominant, and then in the middle is like half and half, English mm-hmm. and French which is where I grew up. Now the Filipino part, which is all the Filipino community is in that middle part, that French English part. And mind you, no, there is no Filipino parents that know how to speak French. So let's get that out of the way. It's just really broken. And they try their best. Yeah, they try but their it's, best. But it's it strongly <laughs> in Lopano accented French. <laughs> like it'll break your ears if you're French. Okay. So you know, elementary, there was always Filipinos. Like, because okay. where I'm in a Filipino neighborhood, right? There's, there was no. What neighborhood kids. was that? If you know why I was asking things, yeah. What's that? What neighborhood was it? Was it? Oh, so this is. I mean, the gangs call it uptown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, it's the borough or neighborhood of Côte de Neige, mm-hmm. Notre Dame de Grace, and it's very much. It's like an air that 
neighborhood is where first immigrants come to Canada. So, mm-hmm. like, they don't know how to speak English or French usually. Mm-hmm. The blacks, the Arabs, the yeah. Greeks, the Italians, the Filipinos. But in school, in elementary school, Filipinos were everywhere. There were no white kids. And I always, I, was, I thought Filipinos are cool, man. Like, I see them everywhere. So there wasn't really, like, a disconnect with whoever. Well, you, I, see, you see someone who looks like you. Yeah, yeah they're, they're all there, right? But then was when I went to high school, um, I kind of like so it. It kind of left me mm-hmm. because I'm more with French people now because my school was in the French side of the island. Mm-hmm. So there were more French people, and then I started kind of like second guessing, like, "Yo, where are the Filipinos at?" Because mm-hmm. I like I missed it, right? You come from seeing someone who looks like you to a place where you don't, you right. barely see yeah. someone who looks yeah. like you. The whole school, like grade. Okay, we have to change because the educational system is different. So grade 7 to grade 11, there's maybe like 11, 12 Filipinos. Wow. And we all hung out. We wow. all hung out. Yeah. We all you flocked to each other. You're the only ones. <laughs> but isn't that like what, like like the natural <laughs> instinct? Yeah, though, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, not even just for us. like for Anyone. Yeah, yeah, anyone, right? Any culture, yeah. <laughs> but uh, like that's when I like when I hung out with the Filipinos out there, I felt like, okay, I'm, this is my people. I'm going I'm to ride with it. And, yeah, there were obviously some conflicting times, Mm -hmm. uh, like, with who I should side with. Like, am I more French? Am I more English? Am I more Filipino? Am I both? Am I I what? And it's only, like, later in my 20s that I realized, like, how important my that upbringing was because not many people experienced Mm -hmm. what I I felt. But, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. How about you? I mean, growing up with you, I feel like you had Filipino friends in church, but yeah. like non-Filipino friends in school. Is that right? Or maybe for the odd one or two. Well, in elementary <laughs> school, I was I was more like integrated. But when I came to like... Actually, Burnaby had more Filipinos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I Back came then. to going, like, could we move to Surrey? Mm-hmm. Um, How old were you guys? I think it was like... I was 17, so how old were the... <laughs> You're like 10. 10. Nine or ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a long time ago. Yeah, so I got more... There's more Filipinos where I hung out with at school. Mm Because I think it was also because of what you join in school, too. Yeah. For example, I was in basketball and dance. And those are two things Filipinos can do. (laughs) So, yeah, I was always surrounded by Filipinos no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, like, even if I go to, like, another class, I'll still be another Filipino there. So I wasn't really, like... Too away from it. It was always about You're pretty fortunate then, yeah, yeah, in that case. Yeah, in my, um, I guess in my experience, like moving to elementary school here was rough. I was, it was hard adjusting. So it was very difficult for me to make friends. Like my first friend was a Serbian girl. <laughs> and then I moved and I was devastated because I was like, it's my first and only friend. Like, why are we moving? And then we moved to, um, to another area in Burnaby, the Edmonds area. Yeah, and I remember that. Yeah, yeah, and my friends were like United Nations. Like I had, I was friends with someone who was Korean, someone who was Serbian, um, someone who was um, Latina, and Afghani. Like I had a whole bunch of friends, and unfortunately, we went to separate high schools. Um, and in high school, because I didn't know anybody, I like hustled hard grade eight. Like, you want to be my friend? Hey, little we're friends, right? Hey, vote for me, grade eight rep. Let's go. Oh <laughs> I hustled. I hustled to make friends. I like hustled to collect people because at that point I had tribe. like, yeah, I had my track just because I had like, um, I had no one. So I was like, I got to collect friends, man. So and great day, let's be honest, like for us, like here in BC, it's like all the anybody from all the schools is now in this high school. So yeah. it's like fair game yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. is so friendly. There's no cliques yet. Maybe if you're in the same high school, uh, the same I'm elementary like, school, but for the most part, everyone like was yeah. pretty open. Yeah. And then it's only when it came to, like, grade nine that I um, had gravitated towards, like, a group of friends that were Filipino. Like, there were, like, the guys and the girls, but they were, like, Filipino. And then we even, um, for people who went to Burnaby South, shout out. Which Rebels. one is that? Because there's, like, North, South, like, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, well, there's Burnaby South, Central, and uh, North. Okay, yeah. so which And there's even Burnaby Mountain. 
Okay, yeah. which one is this one? Like the one that's like. And like, Royal Oak, Burn Creek. <laughs> oh, that's Burn Creek. Uh-oh. That's not. That was like. Uh, that wasn't even around like when I started high school. Oh. So it only started, I think, in grade. Uh, it was only um, constructed and completed when I was in grade ten already. So that's actually a newer high school. Oh. But um, so I gravitated towards these group of people who were Filipino, mm-hmm. um, and we even had a section like there's like A section, G section, and everybody knew whether you played basketball or you had track or if you're grade 12 everyone knew G section was the Filipino section mm-hmm. like everyone knew and also when the teachers know if you're skipping class and you're Filipino they put you in G section oh my god <laughs> they're like yo go to class so um, I the, the kind of Filipinos that I had hung out with, they were immigrants and they had only been in the country maybe a couple years or a few years. Um, Some still were able to hold on to like their Tagalog and stuff. So grade nine, grade 10, I felt like was the prime where I was the most in tune with like OPM or original Filipino music. (laughs) I would like when I, when my Titas would go back to the Philippines and be like, hey, can you buy me that cassette tape of, like, of like that OPM singer? Um, so that was, like, the peak of... Uh, they were older than me. They yeah. were, like, grade 11 or 12, and I was, like, grade You were the nine. youngest? And that- no, there was, like... We were, like, a bunch of different grades, mm-hmm. but we were all, like, hung out and stuff. We did, like, you know, the usual Filipino jamming with the guitar and the freaking <laughs> basketball gym. <laughs> funny like yeah like that like but it was like my best and my most favorite memories because like that was I think where I was the most in touch with my identity as a Filipino because I was fortunate to find like um you know the same group of people who were so in touch with their culture and Mm. um and maybe perhaps it's because they had just come from the Philippines Mm. and because they were new to Canada, new to, you know, uh, to that high school in general. So um, as like, as uh, they graduated, I like my friends in grade 11 and 12 started changing in terms of like, I had maybe like a core group of like guy friends that were Filipino and maybe two other Filipino girls that were my friends, but they're not like the ones that were they were the ones who like grew up here, Mm -hmm. right? They weren't like Tagalog speaking, like the ones that were, had graduated. I felt like I flexed more of my Tagalog with those guys, Mm -hmm. but like the ones that were with me in the same grade as I am, like we speak English to each other, except for uh, my friend Monica, who's like pure Tagalog. So, but we don't speak Tagalog. Were you more close to the ones that graduated? Like, Um, I wouldn't necessarily say so, but I felt like I was able to express myself more in Tagalog and I was able to express more of my culture but even though those group of people had graduated when it came to my turn Mm -hmm. in grade 11 um, and I had um, I had this class called comparative civilization so you learn about different cultures and stuff through throughout history Um, there was a multicultural night or a multicultural show. So you, it's like a group project and then you come up with like a, a showcase. And then that was like my kind of rallying cry for my own culture. And that's when I like rallied a whole bunch of people, please do this to Nickling with me. Yeah, and like, the whole kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, I like, and like, I, I went, like, I talked to kids that I'd known from, like, from, like, from church too. Um, I had uh, talked to kids that were in grade eight. They were grade eight, grade nine. I was in grade 11. I'd be like, do you want to do this, like, traditional Filipino folk dance with me? And then they're like, yeah. And then it was so awesome because, like, it also got our parents excited that there's mm-hmm. this group of kids that want to express their culture. Mm-hmm. And then, like, one of our fondest memories is, like, uh, rehearsing at home and then finding, like, all the costumes and, like, fitting the barongs. And then it was, like, such a beautiful memory because, yeah. you know, I, like, for whoever had inspired my culture when I was maybe two years junior, mm-hmm. now I had come to grade 11 and 12 and I was trying to, like, outwardly do the same thing with like people who were younger that way like we could collectively share our our culture so that was where I was really fortunate Mm -hmm. but you know that's not to say that it's easy because you know I I graduated high school 
I went through college and then I got my first salary job and I was the youngest and the only minority period. Yeah. And then that's when I felt like I like it nobody had to say it, but I yeah, yeah, yeah. Felt that I was different. Like Someone I felt world. I was a minority. I felt I was Filipino. Yeah. Like I couldn't relate to anyone because they were all Caucasian and in their forties, and maybe some of them were married, some of them were divorced. And here I am. I was like fresh out of school, twenty one, twenty two, and I came into this office, and I was like the only Filipino. And then the people that I gravitated to were the ones that were Filipino there weren't very many there was many maybe a handful yeah I gravitated towards them and they were like my atas and my kuyas Mm -hmm. really um, out of respect they were they could have been my parents but I gravitated towards them because I found comfort in knowing that you know there's somebody else that's Filipino but what I did identify that was like so uniquely different is that um, a lot of uh, places Um, no matter what company, there are a lot of Filipino production workers. But we will save that topic for another day as to how that system is put together. Um, We're going to shift gears here and now talk about the challenges that we face today still uh, with, you know, claiming our identity, being more open and expressive about who we are. So... Can OJ. I, let me ask you, can I ask you like yeah. this question that was part of, I, was there, and I'm sure this happened or maybe, maybe it was just me. Was there ever a time where you were like, I hate being Filipino. Like, I don't want to be Filipino. No, fortunately not. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just felt uncomfortable, but not to a point where I hated who I was. You? Mm, no, I don't think so. But I think it's, more so like the old traditional tactics of like what like for example uh like a topic of body shaming in the philippines oh yeah those old those like those like it just doesn't it's not old mindsets yeah yeah Yeah. those old-fashioned mindsets that collide with yeah that doesn't sit well with me other than that like i haven't had like like you've never felt like i hate being my culture i wish i was white or okay cool same yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but there was great. times like in a workplace or if I was around these people, because uh, I like to adapt. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm like, Naturally, yeah. I'm a freaking uh, chameleon. Now. Yeah. Like, I, I like to, I love adapting. I like knowing other people's cultures and learning about who they are as a person. And sometimes I was like, man, I wish I could like my, cause my girlfriend's Korean. I wish I was more Korean. I wish I was yeah. more Chinese. I wish I was mm-hmm. more like Latino or whatever. But I, yeah, I never felt... Uh, like the never. thing where I wished, and it's not to say that I didn't wish I was not Filipino, the thing that I wish that I envy with other cultures is the way that the other cultures have each other's back compared to Filipinos and the crab mentality. Oh, yeah. And for those who are not familiar with crab mentality, it's this long standing thing. I don't know why, but it bleeds through generations and generations. But whenever somebody succeeds, there's always another Filipino that drags them down. So it's like a crab claw. Or drink. hates. So, yeah, or oh, hates. Yeah. Bashers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the haters. Exactly. Um, and like when I think of like, you know, uh, Chinese culture or Korean culture, like even the Indian culture, like yeah. a lot of why um, so many other people have been successful wherever they've immigrated is because the, you know, um, some of the people in their neighborhoods of the same culture have supported them or helped them out. or It's just been a collective effort. Whereas sometimes... Um, And I'm not to say that this is, I'm not saying that we're generalizing here, but let's be honest, a lot of us know this, that there is that crab mentality dragging each other down when you're supposed to boost each other up. And so it becomes exhausting. And that's why people kind of just cancel, cancel their fellow couple buy-ins sometimes. They're like, whatever, I don't care about you. You're canceled because you tried to drag me down or like, oh, like there's this type of jealousy. And I just wished, and I don't know, Um, And I'm sure other people will know this more in depth than we do. And I don't know why it's become like a regular quality for a lot of like Filipino communities. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind. I don't know how like it's like learned and developed somehow. And I don't know where it came from. 
other than I know that the roots is colonialism, okay, yeah. for all of y'all out there who want to just like yeah. jump in here, we know it starts there. Yes, there's that colonialism that has belittled like the the native Filipinos, and so the developed thinking that has now bled through generations is to make somebody less than rather than yeah. boost them to be greater. So, yeah, I, I don't understand. But that's the only other argument I have. I still love being Filipino despite that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I love being Filipino. Don't, don't get me wrong, okay? I want us to be, like, successful. I want us to be I want us to be mainstream. Yes. If that's, uh, if that's the word, right? And it's yeah. funny how it can't be because we are, like the most English speaking or the Asian. English is spokening <laughs> Asian. Asian there is and yes we are Asian I'm going to put a period right there because some people do not identify that we are Asian so I'm going to put a period right the there <laughs> we are in Asia um, we might not come off as is because we have the Spanish influence and yeah we got that swag yeah. <laughs> and, and the Spanish yes, last we, names yeah and, and we speak English and we speak good English and it blows my mind when excuse me to say this pardon me like especially some Caucasian people I'd be like oh you speak good English well yeah because we speak English in our country <laughs> I know you yeah. know some people are so even I'm, I'm gonna include us Filipinos too yeah they're that they're so we're, we're I want us to be mainstream I want people to know what we are where we're from people know what Mexicans are yeah people know what French people are mm -hmm. but when you mention Philippines and like where's that you know, I heard there's a lot of typhoons out there <laughs> okay but going back to colonialism back when all the Spanish countries today, speaking countries, they're, they're like, ah, uh, Filipinas? Like, um, mm -hmm. they, they don't really know. We've always been in the, like, in the backseat. Yeah, yeah. We were colonized by the U.S. Mm -hmm. Not many Americans know that we were colonized by the U.S. Mm -hmm. Again, we're in the backseat. Yeah. We are always in the backseat. Yeah. And I want us to be out there. We want to drive. Exactly. <laughs> We want to be in the front seat. Yeah, we want with, to drive. I want to be in the passenger seat with your le with your hand holding my thigh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want, to, yeah. I want to be like that. Shout out to Bryson Tiller. <laughs> yep. Left hand is there and the other is gripping your thigh. Yeah. yeah, you know, I just wanted to jump in that. Um, you reminded me of something. There was this um, actress, uh, daughter of like um, a beauty pageant title holder. She won, her name is like Winwin -win Marquez, mm -hmm. and she won the Reina Hispano America uh, title. Mm -hmm. And there was a huge uproar. Why? Because people are like, you're not Latino. Why you win this title? Right? But as part of having have been colonialized by the Spanish for centuries, mm -hmm. obviously that puts us in that category. Yeah. And a lot of people had a problem with it when she won the title because they did not identify her. So this beauty pageant is for like, la la like Latino Like it countries? was more, yeah, the... It's, it's uh, centered towards more of the, you know, Latino uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and she was, like, the first Filipino to win. Does she look mestiza, though? No, she looks... She's, she's not. Because no, you know no, most Filipinos... No, she, like, her... Obviously, everyone's, like, a mutt. Uh, let me see if I can... Sorry, you guys can't see this, but... <laughs> but she doesn't look... She looks more Asian, I would say, than oh, Spanish, yeah, she, she but... Does. She looks I mean, Filipino. that nose is definitely <laughs> not Filipino, man. Do we want to talk about the nose right now? Our <laughs> nose? Our nose or the <laughs> Filipino nose? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so an insider joke for y'all. We have, um, you know, we're in a TV Dad family, and what is the most prominent body part that we own is our nose. So it is, it is identically, specifically a Filipino nose. Period. Yeah, one hundred percent. And we. We we show it off with pride. Yeah. Honestly, that that that's why we always laugh about it. We always <laughs> joke about it. Be like, yo, look at your nose. You got a tomato yeah. on your face. Yeah, I grew up with that. Where someone's like, look at her nose. It's so like, it's. But that that's our identity. Like yeah, that's yeah. who we are. And that's what I love that it's our family inside joke because we've never worn our nose in shame. Yeah. Ever. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's so. Speaking of, 
I don't know if any other cultures have this. Um, maybe other others do, but the Filipino culture always knocks on the nose. If you have a flat, punji nose. Mm-hmm. There was always this like admiration for like straight narrow noses, like what the mestiza, like S- Spaniards or Spanish had when they came to the Philippines, and you know that's always been this like. Um, and me, me and my sister will go into into another topic. Y'all, you know, our Philippine, our Pinay sisters, mm-hmm. y'all know the struggle, this beauty, like unrealistic beauty standard. But anyways, yeah. And part of that is the nose. Like it's always yeah. having this Caucasian like mestizo like nose. Of course, well, look at all the all the commercials, all the movies, all yeah. the super actresses and actors, artistas yeah. in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. They are either mixed. Mm-hmm. They have like. Spanish blood. Yeah. Well, yeah. or they just look really pale, mm-hmm. which skin whitening out there is a problem. Yes, right? yeah, That's exactly. What and Filipinos are into. We'll have this as a different topic in yeah. the future. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about unrealistic beauty standards, you know, colorism, um, where this is all derived. But we'll continue with our challenges today with yeah. um, with our issues. So, part of the challenges that <clears throat> uh, OJ and I were talking about the other day is people um, not really identifying that just because we're Filipino there's there is such thing as less or more Filipino and mm-hmm. there isn't whether you know how to speak Tagalog or not whether you know how to speak a dialogue or not whether you're born here or not whether your family you know has been like second third fourth generations mm-hmm. if it's in your blood and you're from the Philippines you are Filipino it's just difficult when we hear other cultures try to identify and put us in a box where it's like no, you're not that Filipino. Well, hold on. What kind of Filipino are you? Like, it, it uh, it's it's a weird experience sometimes, and I've had other friends kind of make jokes like this. And let's be honest, well, among friends, it's okay to have stereotypical jokes, right? Of course. But they would be like, oh, are you going to, like, clean my house? Or are you going to grab me church's chicken? Like, can you go grab me a double-double? It's like, that's, like, the Filipino that they think of, like, mm. the, the people. Or the housemaid. Yeah, the people who are in, like, the service industry. And then when they, they're they friends with you, they're like, oh, you're not that kind of Filipino. I'm like, hold, hold, on, hold on a second. What does that mean? Because I went to school here? Because, like, Wait. you know, because I am English speaking? Like, yeah. we're all Filipino. Well, how does, how is my, the fact that I'm a first generation child of an immigrant makes me less quote air quote filipino than somebody who did just immigrate here yeah. two three four or five years ago it's like it behooves it doesn't me. make any sense like it's Actually, that people see it that way and that and i don't know where that comes from but that's our reality and maybe you know some of you other mil- filipino millennials out there you feel the same way mm-hmm. yeah. well yeah last night i had a one hour argument with my korean girlfriend but I- so you already know. That's ayaw, it. Ayaw. Yeah, or anong sayo? That's what that's <laughs> <it>. anong sayo. <laughs> <laughs> and for you Filipinos out there who are K drama fans, just know that OJ and his girlfriend are officially known as the sing song couple, <laughs> not the song song couple. Yeah. Y'all, y'all ship. They're the sing song couple. But I'll let you continue. Yeah. So the root of our argument last night was that. She's like, oh man, I'm, I'm so good in Korean because I speak French, I speak English, and I'm broken to go, but I get by easy. <laughs> so she says, you're not Filipino, you don't speak it. So then that's when low-key I get heated up because you can't get mad at your girl because <laughs> you, you're, 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 you're in self-isolation after that. <laughs> About 14 days. <laughs> so she says, you're not Filipino. You're not that Filipino. I don't get that Filipino vibe from you. You don't, you don't speak it. I'm like, what do you mean? I, I do. Yeah, uh, it might be broken. We speak English out there. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I've been. I I went there alone by myself. On, yeah. On a on a Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> so I roamed the streets alone. Took a taxi alone. Not an Uber. Not a Grab. I, I, hit up a shabby. Not a Grab. I went out there. I spoke it, man. It was, be like miss, miss. Yeah. Mom, sir. <laughs> So, but I, I started getting low key butter. I'm like, yeah. well, what does that mean? Like, just because I'm born here, I don't speak it that well, that makes me less Filipino. Yeah. And then she 
she says, okay, put it this way. If you take me, because I would consider my girlfriend a fob mm-hmm. in the most She's nicest traditional, way. She's traditional. Traditional Korean, yeah. yeah. She put it this way. She's like, if you wanted to learn the Korean culture, would you go for me? Or would you go with the other girl or the other guy that's born here and speaks broken broken Korean? Mm-hmm. Who is more Korean? And I said, you. Oh, yeah. Right? Because mm-hmm. she is she's more, more traditional. She's more Korean. I can Korean learn. quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I, I, I looked at it like, okay, yeah. versus me, versus the Filipino that immigrated here two, three, four, five years ago. Yeah. Who is more Filipino? And then I said, no, that's wrong because in my heart, I love being Filipino. Yeah. That For me, that I identify myself as a Filipino. That mm-hmm. for me, that should be enough to, yeah. to, to tell you, yo, I'm... I'm a Filipino. It's in your heart. Yeah, exactly. But she says, no, because the way you act, you, you speak mostly English. You have Canadian, uh, North Amer- Western tendencies, mm-hmm. the way you talk, the way I talk. Because you're from here. <laughs> I know. But then she says, because you're from here, so you're not as, as Filipino, Filipino as She's somebody. like, you're not from the mainland. So like, Basically, yeah. 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 And I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. But for me, I, I think... She shouldn't discount the fact that you are Filipino just because of your upbringing. Yeah. Because you are purely Filipino, not only in your blood, but mm-hmm. in your heart as well. And the fact that you you do practice that culture and you express your culture so much more deeply than others, you know, who were Filipino, immigrated here, and felt like they needed to assimilate and actually down, dim down mm-hmm. their downplay yeah downplay yeah. sorry yeah. their culture their Filipino nest because nahihiya sila or mm-hmm. they're embarrassed yeah. to be Filipino they want to be more white quote. this is for those that don't identify themselves as Filipino right mm-hmm. I, I'd be talking to my parents oh there's this Filipino celebrity uh, American celebrity or Filipino Canadian celebrity and the, what's the first thing they ask? Oh, is he born here? Mm, right? Okay, so there's this like disconnect. There's this like, okay, she, he's not one of us. She's not one of us. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. like from their perspective because we don't know, what, we, we, we don't have the Filipino mindset like, yeah, like, yeah. The, the, like them. Yeah. Right? That's true. So for them, they're like, even they, they yeah. classify them as like not Filipino. Exactly. Now. So that doesn't give uh, for those stories you hear like, um, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're like, oh, it's because they they put us down there too. Yeah, that could be true. a reason. Yeah, yeah. Also, their environment. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's that's that where it becomes I'm... a developed. There's this uh, wonderful thing, and I wanted to uh, share this. Um, there was this uh, something on Instagram from Jen Vincent Gonzalez, and uh, it it says, "You are Filipino enough, no matter." The languages you may or may not speak, no matter your stance on using Philippine X, no matter the shade of your skin, no matter the fluidity of your gender, no matter your belief in a higher power, no matter if you've ever been to the motherland, or no matter when you last been to the mother- motherland, um, decolonize your mind. Basically, you're Filipino enough, mm-hmm. right? Nice. And so for anybody else to kind of classify you other than, it's like they need to be a little bit more mindful as to you know, how a person feels about their culture and they need to be, um, maybe practice a little bit of sensitivity to the fact that you can't just go and classify someone who's not being Filipino enough when they know that they are Filipino enough, Mm -hmm. they feel like they are Filipino enough, they feel it in their heart and they live it day by day and they're proudly Filipino. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's unfortunate that there's still like challenges like that. How about you? For Chia? Well, actually, at my old workplace, my old recent workplace, I won't mention them, but um, <laughs> there was a, a lot of the, well, I worked in production, and what my sister said earlier, there's a lot of people in production who are Filipino. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I got to witness that firsthand. A lot of Filipinos, you could see it click up right away, and they, they were mainly all older, much older than me. And only speak the Galo. Yeah. yeah. If they know that you're part. from here, they're like, Oi. But the thing is, what happened was there's so many English Filipinos speaking. speaking Tagalog that they got in trouble for speaking Tagalog. Mm. Oh, is that a union job? I only hear those kind of rules. No, if but it's, it's also in a sense where they're it's excluding. Like a, yeah. Actually, it's not yeah. even that. It's any culture. Like, yeah, it's, it's all, like, others could deem it hella rude, like, 
you might be talking about me type of stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before I came in, it was kind of like at peace. But when (laughs) I was kind of the catalyst for everyone in there because I would call them out for speaking to Gallo. Mm -hmm. And I know that after every paycheck, all the Filipinos would go to like dinner at the end of the day or whatever. But I wasn't invited (gasps) because I'm not a real Filipino. I wasn't. To them. To them. To them. them. Which is what I was saying, right? Yeah. To them. So I yeah I brought that up to um, what's it called our management, and then we had to like have, brought all the Filipinos together, and I was just the one being all like y'all are y'all are rude. Yeah, I gotta say, mga titas, mga titos, like ruthless. Uh, it's sad. Like you cannot complain about younger kids not reconciling with their identity as Filipino enough if. There are other younger Filipinos who are working in the same place as you that you exclude. Yeah. Like what like what kind of love is that? Right? Mm-hmm. It's not a very Where's fun, the Filipino love? Yeah, exactly. Yung pang bayanihan, the the kababayan love, like it's where is that? Nice. Like and then, you know, they'll be the first to uh, shame somebody like yeah, but, I, you can you ganyan, ganyan. Yeah. but then they would go out for dinner and exclude the younger Filipino you know and then when they get called they out can't on speak, that they yeah. seem like oh they, I'm they're they offended. offended and I'm like no you're doing it wrong first of all it's a, pretty much a rule to speak English in your workplace period so respect mm-hmm. thing like yeah. do what you're supposed to like we're not in the motherland I know I get it you want to speak your mother tongue but just not uh, and it, the like the ironic part is because the Filipinos have the most capability to speak English. Yeah. Like it might be heavily accented, but their English is really good. And yeah. for them to choose to you know to speak their language to exclude others, um, yeah, it, it that's where we get painted into a bad light. But that's why you need to understand it so you. They and she does. Yeah, exactly. Right. She like, can't yeah. screw you over. And the thing is, like, management was like, okay, well, let us know if they're talking some. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, well, the they're bridge. talking again. <laughs> like, I don't care if I'm snitching. Like, you know, you guys are making me uncomfortable. But And I'm a new employee. I'm a brand new employee. Like, at first, you welcome me at your Filipino table, giving me your, like, How much older lunch. were they than you? Like, much older. Like, like, like 40s, 40s, 50s. Yeah. Some yeah. even okay. older. So titas. Yeah, yeah. 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 The titas and the titos, man. So it was fun like, at first. Till you call them out, yeah. <laughs> and then they all gang up on you, and then you sit at another table. But other than that, like it's just kind of like it doesn't make any sense. And just adding into that, don't worry, y'all. We'll save toxic Filipino traits for another episode. However, part of that is not being allowed to say something if you know the old-fashioned traditional Filipinos are doing something wrong and that's exactly right? what I they say that I'm older than you I have seniority yeah. than you I have more life experience than you you can't tell me we're not being disrespectful but as what you tried to say you're she was trying to be more inclusive yeah. and trying to identify like hey be more inclusive because by us being exclusive it puts us like as a community and bad light <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And yeah, I guess my sister was fortunate that she understands because, you know, forever, for I know there's some of you out there who might not quite understand and who are second, third generation Filipinos here, right? I even bet you. First. Yeah, <laughs> even. <laughs> doesn't matter. I bet you matter. felt uncomfortable. Like, you know, they're speaking Tagalog. They may be saying something about you you don't want to assume, but you feel that. Like, it hurts. Of course. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's like. Fun. Yeah, it's disrespectful and it's hurtful and it saddens me that like they're um, hurting somebody that they could potentially teach, Mm -hmm. right? Like you could teach someone like, hey, you know, or even like connecting on stories like, oh, tell me how you grew up in the Philippines. Like what kinds of like stuff did you do in your childhood? Like so that whoever is a younger Filipino can like learn about that and identify with it and actually have that experience resonate with them so that they could appreciate their culture a little bit more so i mean that's why we're starting this podcast right guys like we want to help educate things bridge some of the gap address some of the issues of um you know kind of old colonialist mentalities and some challenges that we face today as filipino youths or filipino millennials and um we hope by uh, doing this we're able to connect with you you're able to feel like you're heard and you're able to feel like 
uh, yeah, somebody has gone through what I did. You can relate. Mm-hmm. Here's a tip for those Filipinos that are maybe shy or don't they want to connect with like the older g- generation, like in a workplace or just like in school or just wherever any group, right? Start with the opo, yeah. Right, start with start with those. Yeah. <laughs> say say the word po every time because mm-hmm. immediately they will be like, okay, brownie po. She know he or she knows what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right? exactly what happened at my workplace too. He yeah. or she knows what's up. Yeah. He, he, they, they might be like, okay, she, he or she's born out here, or whatever. But he, he was raised right. She was raised. So she. Yeah. Right? And also just to um, provide some perspective, um, and this is not always the case. I don't want to seem like we're ragging on yeah. the titas and titos out there. A lot of it is because they are self-conscious about their English. They can speak English, but they do feel self-conscious about it. They feel maybe a little insecure about it, and that's why they tend to kind of flock with whoever could speak the Tagalog or whatever dialect as them, because... You know, their self-esteem is affected a little bit, you know, when it comes to actually having to speak English, like, in the workplace. And and we get that. But, you know, at the same time, like, I wanted to also provide some perspective where it's not necessarily them, like, saying something negative about you, right? If you're, if you can't speak the Tagalog or you can't understand it, sometimes it really is the perspective of, like, they don't know how to talk to you yeah. or they they're actually intimidated by you i want to share a little story about a friend of mine yeah i put it in my notes here so um no names no names no names okay. but if she ever listens to this you know who you are but don't worry this is all love and we laugh about this now okay. <laughs> so um she first came here from the philippines maybe a couple years ago right and she's like fresh from the Philippines and um, I became friends with her. Obviously, she knew like um, that I speak English a lot, but I tried to speak more Tagalog with her because I wanted to connect with her. Yeah. Right. And also it was like great for me. Like it's a great feeling for me to be able to speak like if I have the ability to speak Tagalog if I can. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there was like, uh, there was like three of us, we were friends and then she would like laugh at my Tagalog. Okay. For other, um, other people who are first, second, third generation, fourth, fifth, whatever. And we were born here and let's say you got to know me and then you don't speak Tagalog or maybe you don't understand it. And then we hang out and then you hear me speaking Tagalog. I'm like, my family, you're like, whoa, whoa. Yo, she gets when, she, when she switches yo, up to a long When I switch to Desaya, I love yo, yo. <laughs> so like, but the, that that's for y'all who like were born here. You guys were like, whoa, she can speak the Tagalog. But my friend was laughing and she was laughing her butt off because my Tagalog was actually grammatically wrong. <laughs> really? Yeah. What the thing is, wow, well, this is blowing your mind. Um, what I love about our conversation slang or whatever in Tagalog is that it doesn't have to be proper when it's conversational. Just a disclaimer for everybody. I don't know deep Tagalog. I know conversational Tagalog. When I go home, I can get around. I can get with, you know, Manong Taxi. Like, I get, yeah, I, yeah, like yeah. I'm good when I go home. Like my but- Tinder date. <laughs> that's, that's how I got around. That's good yeah, too. Podcast. <laughs> but if you listen to my like I can um, get by with my Tagalog and I have the full accent so it doesn't sound like an Englishized Tagalog so you know it sounds like I'm speaking for Tagalog right but grammatically it's actually incorrect dahil alam nyo kung anong ibig ko sabihin nobody corrects me Right, mm-hmm. they like they're like yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean like because in a regular con- like in a regular conversation we don't like we we don't hold people down to like you know format or full yeah. grammar when they speak mm-hmm. right <laughs> so she was like laughing so much and then our other friend actually spoke up and he's like uh, he's uh, Tagalog speaking as well and he's been an immigrant for a few years and then he's like hey like she's just trying like don't like you know don't worry about it like you know, yeah. don't, la- don't like don't make fun of it that's why he told her at least she then, knows how to speak yeah no at least i'm trying okay, like i'm okay. trying to connect with her mm-hmm. by speaking tagalog mm-hmm. and her she admitted that she was self-conscious about her english that's why she doesn't want to speak english as much so we kind of get away with me speaking 
in Tagalog, sometimes I'll switch to English because I can't quite complete my Tagalog sentence, mm -hmm. but she'll always respond back to me in Tagalog. But then when I speak Tagalog to her, she's like laughing because it's like technically wrong. <laughs> Because she's pure Tagalog, yeah, yeah. right? So she's like laughing. And then I've never felt bad just because with me just kind of goes over my head. But like he actually like told her like she's trying. Like, yeah. So for, you know, as a heads up for y'all out there, if somebody is trying, even in their English-sized accented Tagalog, right? Don't make fun of them. They yeah. are trying. It's already a struggle enough to even try to say those words yeah. without feeling weird about it. So just open up and just embrace it and just appreciate that they're actually mm -hmm. trying to like make some Tagalog words in there and trying to like, you know, form a half sentence with Tagalog words in there or whatever dialect you speak. Yeah. yeah. There's actually this uh, Filipino bat professional basketball player in the Philippines. I, I thought she was a mestiza or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she had a interview after the game, and I swear to God, I thought she spoke better Filipino uh, Filipino than me. Mm -hmm. But she just <laughs> she only added the words like "kase." <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I thought she was just better than me, even though she spoke English. <laughs> but she peppered you know, she peppered some Filipino words in there. Okay, Bro, I thought words? she was Filipino, but she's actually full full white. <laughs> but. Yeah. See, oh, yeah, I was just about to jump onto that. What is the deal with our fellow Filipinos either not identifying each other as Filipino enough, even though they are natively and by shade, by color, by looks, are distinctively Filipino, but have the highest esteem and appreciation for other cultures, yeah. oh, um, wow. i.e. especially white I will put a line underneath that. White people who speak the Gala. Even foreigners. Just foreigners. Yeah, just foreigners foreigner. in general. They're like, oh my God, you're so wonderful. You look at you, you're just like us. But they're like of a different culture. And yet, like, your younger generation, you sort of kind of shame for not being Filipino enough. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, make it make sense. But you think that's the crab thing? Part of it is the crab Yes, actually, not completely. Part of it is, again, that col colonialist thinking. Yeah. It's always appreciating and admiring the white skin, the white the man, yeah. right? And so, or even a foreigner, right? Like yeah. you said. So that's why, like, they, they would rather admire a different culture, become trying to become like us more than the younger generation who's struggling and trying to learn how and like putting them down it's like those like youtube videos of like white guy orders in tagalog perfectly and shocks locals like, <laughs> okay and like but if someone else if i were to do that i can't speak it I, but yeah that's impressive. That's, like, that's impressive yeah yeah I mean, we'll, give, impressive, we'll, we'll give we'll give kudos to that because they love our culture yeah, enough they, they want to embody our culture they love the hospitality and the warmth i mean that's why anthony Bourdain loved us yeah but like it's so ironic. Can, can I try and break this down? Yeah, so, look, please. Let, 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 me, yeah, let yeah. me try and dissect this because yeah. I have this thought, okay? Like when we admire the white, the, the foreigner that speaks Filipino, we we put him like, oh my God. Or, In a pedestal. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, this guy, this person loves Filipino food. This person loves Filip Filipino culture. This guy loves Manny Pacquiao, okay? <laughs> Whatever. There's this thing where I, I believe that Filipinos, whether born here or in the motherland, we unconsciously put our 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 people down. Like yeah. we're not as we're not as good as them. Whoa. But let me tell you something, man. We are as good as everybody. Let's go. Okay. We invented the karaoke machine. People don't know that. <laughs> we a Filipino created the patent for the karaoke. Mm -hmm. The Filipino created the yo-yo. Okay. The Filipino is the best singer in the world. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Just, there's, there's just, we, we have to get that out of the way. And part of it is colonialism, that someone is better than us. That's why, that's why, oh my, this white, this white guy knows how to speak Tagalog. He loves us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We feel love. We, we, it's someone like, we need like, validation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? 
Someone but we, we shouldn't need to. And, like, again, that kind of yeah. goes into Filipinos having to take up, um, you know, uh, types of occupations that uh, what we've been known as now, like, historically you know, service workers or whatever, because there's some, and I'm not saying all, I'm just saying that, putting that out of the way, who don't feel like they are enough. And that's why, like, you know, when I encounter, and the thing is, once upon a time, I actually thought that myself. Yo, and another friend of mine, she's not even Filipino, he's like, oh my God, Archie, you deserve better. No, you went to school for this. This is your talents. This is your experience. You deserve better, sis. Go for it, yeah. right? And I'm like, oh my god, you're right. Yeah. And she's not even like she she wasn't even Filipino. And I owe it to her why I feel like I've been able to go after opportunities and have been brazen and just be just like makapal mukha or in other terms uh, in translation that means thick skin to just push and just try and just be be what I think I deserve mm-hmm. because a lot of the times and once upon a time I thought that mm-hmm. like oh I'm not good enough yeah. oh I, I don't deserve to earn this much like oh I'm only this like I don't know how I got that way but I don't know if it was developed because of our culture but yeah once upon a time I felt like okay like uh, I think like my first four years working and it was in that company where I was like sure I you know I was like uh, the token minority I would say (laughs) I was there for like four and a half years and it's one of those things where like usually like your Filipino parents would be like oh once you find a good job just stay there forever and when yeah, I wanted, like, yeah, they're like, it's security, you know, but I was like, no, I got stabbed in the back. I like, I can't yeah. handle saying this. It, yeah. it hurts my soul too much. I need, I need more. I know there's more out there. And then that's when I jumped to an, another company, uh, one that was like very reputable, but like every time I had, um, sought to change positions or change careers like I, I'd done like a couple uh career shifts like my mom every time was like enough why like why are you doing that that's insubordinate la 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 <laughs> she's like no you should just stay there forever and I, and as somebody not only who was born here right but all and I've been so blessed to have been afforded the opportunities that I've had here um, because my parents came here and sacrificed for me to be here. I feel like even more so I owe it to them and it is only to do them justice that I go for more, go for the sky and go for what I deserve. That's what they bled and they sweat and they cried for. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's like you do you, live your truth. But like what I've had so many tumbles with my mom every time I decided to change jo- uh, change jobs or even had a career change because it was like, I know I can do this. I know I deserve this. I need to be more like, this is where I need to be. This is my goal. This is my ambition. And every time it was like almost breaking her heart every time. Cause she's like, ah, it's another, like, you know, it's another moment of like instability, like just like uneasiness that she has because a lot of Filipino parents had like, they struggled really hard to, work at the jobs that they they're at and some of them may not even enjoy the jobs that they're in but they sacrifice hella because they wanted a better life better quality life and they want a better opportunities and better life for the children mm-hmm. but that's why sometimes they're scared when we make these decisions and they're all like i don't want you to make mistake just listen to me yeah. but I, for me, my take on it is like, no, I want to hold this banner up high, this flag. I am Filipino. I am your child. I'm going to do you right. Right. Yeah. So even though we're going to fight about this now. <laughs> you know, appreciate it later. Yeah. 
Yeah. Later. And then, and then, you like, share oh, on Facebook. my anak, she works here. <laughs> <laughs> she does this. Do you want this cow? Please <laughs> share her status on Facebook. Yeah. Like, like, Come on, right? I hate, I hate when they <laughs> like do my that. pictures and then they share like my, you know, and like, like my mom, the difference with my mom, uh, and don't get me wrong, <laughs> God bless Filipino parents, but man, when they are proud, they are, they are so loud. But for me, I try to keep my stuff like my own success is quiet just to practice some humility right and i hate like when my mom kind of overshares or she over you yeah. know she she over brags sometimes mm-hmm. uh, i'm not a superstar believe me i'm just a normal middle class folk like y'all so don't worry about it <laughs> just just as a disclaimer there but before she got there to that you know exclamation mm-hmm. i would say her and i would have at it every time mm-hmm. <laughs> popcorn front row like, yeah. yeah like yeah. every time there's just like a little bit of drama every time i choose to make a decision that affects my career Mm -hmm. or affects my job because like you know uh, security and survival is so important to them Mm -hmm. that like they don't want to see their kids you know struggling and so they're fearful when you choose to make decisions you feel like in your heart is best for you and your future and your career that they would rather (laughs) want to see you settle (laughs) And I want to tell them, like, no, I am good enough. Let me do this. Because, like you said, there's so many of us out there who are Filipino who feel like, I am not good enough. This is okay. Okay lang ito. Oh, I don't want any trouble. Yeah, I know. Like, I'll just be quiet. Like, um, in my old company, that place, <clears throat> there was this Filipino guy who's like a kuya figure. I wasn't that close to him. But the other coworker that we had, she was a Caucasian girl. She was about in her early 30s. And then she could see that he was not being treated well. And she would always encourage him, like, hey, say something. Like, hey, stop taking the overtime shifts if the other guy is not willing to share the load. Yeah. Like, he's like, oh, no, I don't want any trouble. Like you said, we should be in the same, we should be respected in the same playing field as other cultures. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to let that sit and summer for a bit. Why does it have to be different? Why do we have to be seen as lesser than? Mm-hmm. And therefore, that creates this mentality for others where, like, they don't feel like they can speak up. They feel like they're not enough, and they feel like you don't want to, um, you don't want any trouble, so that uh, they'll continue to struggle in silence. And we need to change that. Yeah, we okay? need to change that. Because then you have to, to start compromising that. things. But then, why are you going to compromise things for yourself? Yeah, I mean for other people. Exactly. Be what? Just because we're Filipino? No, right? And like, and she was Caucasian, and she, she was the one who was telling him like, you should say something. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, bro, like you, you deserve better. He's like, oh, I don't want any trouble. It's okay. You know, I don't want any issues. It's fine. I'll just do my job. And historic, characteristically, that's how he was. Um, that's what he was known for. Like taking he, advantage of. Yeah, being it not as a doormat, but he'll say yes to anything and he'll never say here or no and he'll never complain. And for all of you other guys out there, you know this. Other ones that are uh, working right now um, or had work in a you've probably been at that situation where you are uncomfortable and you feel like maybe there may have been some even racist you know experiences but you guys take it and i'm speaking to the other fellow filipinos out there yeah okay just take it because you don't feel like oh i shouldn't say anything i don't want any trouble i understand where someone is afraid to speak up because they don't want to shake the boat because they think it might affect their work yeah but I want to remind all the other Fili- Fili- Filipinos out there that you deserve you deserve to have dignity. Of course. You deserve respect. Yeah. And if in any case, and I'm so glad, like, I think the workplaces today are a little bit more sensitive now. <laughs> now. <laughs> how, well, yeah, of course. It, it takes progression. Yeah. It takes growth. It gets getting there. Not all of them, but now people are more sen- sensitive to kind of who people are, even more so their cultures, especially, like, when we're talking about race now. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you you deserve to have dignity and you deserve to have the platform to speak and you deserve to be able to stand up for yourself and don't let being Filipino stop that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So anyways, I think we pretty much um, 
said, you know, covered quite a lot of things for our first first episode for this podcast. That was a solid one. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot more I could talk about. Like, oh, yeah. For sure. You gotta save the juice. Do you have any other comments? Any other statements you want to share? You know, before we wrap this up and close it, put a pin in it. Yo, I'm gonna make Filipino culture mainstream. Yeah. And if I have to become president of the Philippines, <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put in my nomination right now. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to put us on the map. Okay. Everyone's going to like our women. Okay. Oh, they already love our women. <laughs> they love our women too much. Okay. You gotta take it first. Yeah, they go yeah. for the women first, but <laughs> I'm going to put us on the map, man. If I, if it's one person at a time, one mindset at a time, I'm, I'm going to put us there. Yeah. Okay. It's for, for you got to be on the passenger seat with the, with the hand on the thigh. Yeah, man. And the jeepney. Exactly. And the jeepney. <laughs> on the tricycle. Yeah. I love it. So, I'm going to do, we'll do, maybe we'll think of we'll crowdsource some games or some questions at the end of this We're, we'll just close it with this you know on a, on a regular day what is your favorite Filipino comfort food to turn to comfort food yeah. oh man what could you eat like every day all day every day. day yeah you know you got that you know that that um, breakfast lunch dinner merienda one two three <laughs> Every day, if I can eat it every day, yeah. just like a uh, longanisa, egg, and rice. Yo, long That's season, long right yeah. Now. yeah. That stuff is good. And we know some of y'all that there, out there that are not Filipino, you love that longanisa. Love that longanisa burp smell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. That chorizo. How about you? Or chia? Lumpia all the way. Like fries. I can just eat that in one. Like if there was a bucket. Yeah. Vinegar or sweet chili sauce? Sweet chili sauce, yeah. Mm, that's the stuff. Or like the, I don't know what, what kind of sauce it is in the Philippines. It's like a spicy plum sauce. Yeah, I don't know I what never it taste is. It. I don't know what it is, but that. Yeah. I only know vinegar. <laughs> Pinako rock. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's spicy stuff. I gotta, I gotta, you know, when I, when I throw some, um, some Filipino brands there, I gotta make, I gotta make the syllables pop. <laughs> You know, it just it just puts a period in the way our accent is, and this is not to make fun of it. This is to really like you know, to hold it hold it in high regard. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, um, my comfort food that my go to um, is this soup dish called bachoy. Ooh, uh, that's, that's, that's fire! Yeah, la if you're drunk. <laughs> Oh my god, that thing is from God. <laughs> yeah. That is my go to. So, um, you know, when we put this up, uh, this podcast maybe we'll th- yeah we'll throw it out on an Instagram out there so you guys can share your favorite comfort foods um, and yeah uh, watch out for our next episode thank you so much again for joining us hope you enjoyed this first pilot podcast <laughs> yep. this is me Archie signing off Archia OJ let's get it peace Hello.